Okay, let's pray. Our hands together. Close your eyes. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the children here this morning. And I pray, Lord, that the story will uh, help them to understand. And uh, thank you, Lord, for giving us your word. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, no, you should be praying. You shouldn't be hitting people when you're praying, hey? Okay. Oh, questions. Who remembers last week? Who remembers how many days Jesus was buried for? Simon? Three. Three days. And do you remember what it's called when somebody dies on a cross? Who remembers what it's called? Do you remember Atticus? Starts with C. Very good. Crucifixion. Now today we are talking about the gift of tongues. The gift of tongues. Who knows what a tongue is? Yeah, that's the physical body part. But what about, what's another meaning of the word tongue? Who knows? Simon's the only one that knows. A language, that's right. So we're talking about the gift of tongues today. And this is when, on the day of Pentecost, a miracle happened and people were able to speak in languages that they never spoke before. Who's able to speak another language other than English? <laughs> you guys only learn English at home. Maybe some people at the back. Mommy can speak a language other than English. What can she speak, Sarah? Spanish. Spanish. So different languages. You've got Spanish, different... Languages, you know, daddy's family speaks Chinese, Mandarin, don't we? Okay, have a question a bit later, Simon. Oh, so on the day of Pentecost, so this is after, you remember, Jesus rose again from the dead. And what were the disciples doing? They were a little scared. They weren't sure what was going to happen. Jesus asked them to wait for the promise of the Father, which was God pouring out his spirit. So here are the disciples. It's just a drawing they're in the upper room, and they're a little bit scared, aren't they? They're a little bit scared. And they're together, they're praying, and you know what happens when they're in this upper room? Hey, Matej, come take a seat. They're in this upper room. All of a sudden, they're in this upper room. Now, it's pictured as this sort of wind, but what they heard, what did they hear? They heard the sound of a rushing mighty wind coming from heaven. A rushing mighty wind. And that sound was so loud it filled the whole room. Now what do you think that sound sounded like? Who wants to have a go at making the sound of a rushing mighty wind? Abel, go. Make the sound of a wind. Oh, that's, not a, that's not a mighty wind. That sounds like a little wind. A rushing mighty wind. Mighty. Go. Sure. What are you, Timothy? You look like you got one. Go. <laughs> All right, Simon, you have a go. Whoosh. What would a sound of a rushing mighty wind sound like? Shh. Who else wants to have a go? Nobody. All right, let's do it all together. You ready? Sound of a rushing mighty wind, go. Shh. Oh, try and do it without spitting on everybody. <laughs> it's really noisy, isn't it? So, it's probably a lot louder than that, isn't it? On the actual day. It would have been really loud. It would have filled the room. And that signified God's presence coming in to the room. And you know what happened? The Bible says here in Acts 2, 3, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Who knows what a cloven tongue is? Anybody? You want to know what it is? Like a snake tongue. Like a snake tongue. Ah, oh, maybe you've seen your mom preparing the, the crop. That's right. You think about a clove. Cloven means it's divided like a snake has like a forked tongue. That's a cloven tongue. So what happened? They were sitting in the room and cloven tongues like fire sat upon each of them. So a lot of people think it's fire, but look, you see it's like a cloven tongue. You see there, the cloven tongue at the top? And it sat upon each of them. And when that cloven tongue came and sat upon each of them, it was moving like a flame. You see how, like, a, who knows what a flame looks like when it moves? You've seen the fire, sitting in front of a campfire, and the fire, shh, that's what these tongues were doing. They were sitting on top of them like fire. And then what did they do? They started speaking in languages that they never spoke before. Can you imagine? It's like you don't know Spanish. Manager and Abel started speaking Spanish. What would you say? You'd say like, Abel, 
You don't know how to speak Spanish. How come all of a sudden you can speak Spanish? Well, that's what happened when they went out preaching the gospel to people that, of people that didn't speak the language that they spoke. And you know what they said to them? Here's one of the disciples speaking. They said, hey, you're Galilean. But how can we can listen to you in the language that you don't speak? So it's like if I spoke Spanish and Timothy all of a sudden started speaking Spanish to me and I'm thinking, Timothy, you don't know how to speak Spanish. How are you speaking Spanish to me? Well, it was a miracle, wasn't it? Because they, gave, they were given the gift of tongues. So here's Peter preaching. And look at what it says here, Acts 2, 7 to 8. And they were all amazed. Who knows what amazed means? You guys don't know what it means? When you're amazed at something, what do you think? Simon. <laughs> That's right. It's when you're shocked. You're like, oh, ah. They were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, look, and are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? See, so they're hearing them in their own language. And you know, on the day of Pentecost, what happened? Peter got up. And he preached the gospel to them. He told them about Jesus, like we learned about in the last two weeks. He told them about how Jesus was killed, how he died, and how he rose again for us. And, you know, he was able to preach to a lot of people that day, and so did all the other disciples. And, you know, a lot of people, they heard the word and were glad. And they got baptized as well, you know, signifying that they had believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. So... We learned a little bit about the gift of tongues today and what happened on the day of Pentecost. So the sound, what did it sound like? Who knows? Got some questions? Oh, I just wanted to show you this last verse, Acts 2.41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So how many people were added to them? How many people were added to them, Timothy? 3,000 souls. Okay. Now, who remembers what is a cloven tongue? What's a cloven tongue? Sarah. What do you think? No, Abel, what do you think a cloven tongue is? A snake tongue. It's like a snake's tongue, isn't it? Like a forked tongue. And who remembers the sound that they heard? What did it sound like? Simon? Yeah, it sounded like a mighty wind, didn't it? And when they went out to preach the gospel, do you remember who stood up and preached the gospel to a lot of them? What was the disciple's name? Anybody else? Mateo, give your turn. Peter, yes, that's right, very good. And last question before we get into our craft. How many people were added to them after he preached? All right, see if Atticus knows this one. All right. Timothy? 3,000. 3,000 souls. Very good. Okay, we've got a craft today. What do we got? Do we have an example? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Cloven tongue. So today we're going to make this. Ah. Huh? And you put it on your head, and the cloven tongue sat on everyone's head. Isn't this cool? All right, very good. All right, let's all stand up. We're going to go to the back, and we're going to make one of these. <laughs> 